and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communications and Marketing Department. And today we're going to talk about a new program, a special program coming up at the library. My guest is Rita Scrivener from the Main Library. Welcome. Thanks for having me back. This sounds really like a fun learning opportunity. Tell us a little bit about um, the Created Equal program. Well, about 500 institutions around the country um, were given the opportunity to, uh, to conduct this program, which is a series of four films. And the organizations choose when they can show the films. The other component is a discussion component. So local scholars are invited to discuss the various issues uh, raised in the films with the people who attend. And it's, uh, it's open to all ages. And we're doing it every other month, uh, starting in February and ending in August. And it was originally started by the National Endowment for the Humanities to start in 2013 um, to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation wow, and the 50th right. anniversary of the March on Washington. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. so this, um, the these films will be showed at the main library? Yes, they'll be shown in the meeting rooms in the lobby right as you go in. And who, who produced these movies? They're obviously something I haven't really heard of. Mm -hmm. Documentaries? Yes, they're documentaries. Most of them were shown on PBS, but they were all funded by the National Endowment for the Humanities. The program is also presented in conjunction with the Gilder Lerman Institute for American History. So this is obviously, it's going to start in, in February, which ties in very nicely with Black History Month. And um, tell us a little bit about the films and, and how they progress. Well, they kind of progress chronologically through history from uh, the very beginning of the Civil Rights Movement, which I, I didn't even know this. It really started in 1776. As old as our nation is, the Civil Rights Movement is also, is also that old. Um, the Abolitionists is the first movie that we're going to be showing. And it covers uh, important figures through the, the early history of civil rights in America, like John Brown, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Beecher Stowe. Um, the first evening um, of this program, along with all the others, the first evening is for the film or film clips. And then the second evening is more excerpts and discussion. So really, it is education, but it's also a dialogue for people to keep talking about um, the important changes from the civil rights movement. That's a really important component, is, is to kind of see where civil rights has been um, the, and the various influences that those movements have on, on now, such as grassroots efforts, which have always been really important, and then also how the law, like the Supreme Court decisions, um, one of which is covered in, in the movie The Loving Story about an interracial marriage, um, the Supreme Court really helped civil rights by um, overturning a law prohibiting interracial marriage. Um, and so as you know, regular people and the legal system have both been really important in, um, in helping people um, achieve the equality that they, that they are guaranteed. Now, I'm going to ask you a, a, a difficult question. But mm -hmm. I, I think that there are people out there who feel like, I'm tired of this topic. Why do we keep talking about it? We're today. We don't need to review this history. Why, why do you think it's important for people to continue to look back at the pre-civil rights movement, at the civil rights movement, and at, at the changes? Well, I feel like this will always be an important topic because I think that if, we're, if, if we keep looking at it again, we can be sure that we won't sort of fall back um, I think that communication is the most important thing. I think that it's, it's, it's easy for everyone to make snap judgments about other people or to maybe forget what people in the past went through to help build the world that we live in now. And I think we really owe it to the past and to each other to, to look at what others have done, to think about what we can do. And, and it doesn't have to be huge things. Um, you know, there doesn't have to be a revolution or, or anything organized, it can just be an awareness of um, the kindness and good judgment we're showing to each other in everyday life, and just an awareness that if we sort of fall into habitual um, negative judgments based on nothing that, um, that, that, that really means anything, you know, socially or, or anything else about other people, you know, we just have to get to know people for who they are. 
And I think that's always going to be important. I think it is. I think it's hard for people to get past. And, I, you know, let's be honest, you and I are both white. It's an uncomfortable subject. And we have no experience of, you know, the people who lived through slavery, through Jim Crow, through those, you know, being shot with a, a fire hose or, or chased with dogs. I mean, it, it's not my life. But it is, I think, while painful, something that, I mean, you have to open those painful wounds sometimes. And, and you have to look at your own history and the history of our community and where we are now. Because it, history is just so important and being honest about it and examining what you can learn from it and, and how things changed. Yeah, it, it is uncomfortable, but there's, there's a part of it that's, um, that's really remarkable and that is considering where we started and the terrible things that happened and then where we are now which in so many ways is, um, is incredible considering the short period of time that all of these events cover. Yeah, And yeah. so um, it's, it's in many ways a story of great triumph. Even if the, the final triumph hasn't been achieved yet, I think that every step along the way should be celebrated. That's great. Okay, so tell me a little more about the library program. Do you have the dates? How can people get more information if they're interested? Well, they can always check the city's event calendar at hampton.gov. Mm -hmm. um, they can also go straight to our website, hamptonpubliclibrary.org, to find the dates. I can also just list them for you briefly now. The first one is on February 12th and 13th. They're always going to be on a Wednesday and a Thursday. The second one is going to be April 9th and 10th. Okay. And I've got to look at my cheat sheet again. The third one is June 11th and 12th, and then the fourth is August 13th and 14th. If people want to learn more about the films in particular, and if they don't have time to attend the movie, but would like to watch them streaming online for free, oh, they can go, go to um, createdequal.neh.gov. So really, let's talk again. So the first one is kind of the um, early, early days before, really before the Civil War, right? Yes. Of abolitionists mm -hmm. and up through that kind Mostly of uprising Mostly the programs. 1830s. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then part two is? Part two is slavery by another name. And that covers um, a very difficult topic that I actually didn't know um, anything about. This might be new to a lot of folks. Uh, slavery by another name is about um, forced labor um, from Reconstruction to World War II. So it covered a, a, a tremendous period of time and involves people being arrested on really ridiculous charges uh, like vagrancy, which would be very hard to defend yourself against, being charged um, exorbitant fines, which they couldn't pay, and in order to pay them, being forced to work uh, to pay the, the state back. So it really was that period where technically um, slavery had been abolished, but certainly African Americans were being treated as second class and subject to um, any number of restrictions and requirements that, that um, European Americans were not. Yes, this is a case in which the law unfortunately was used more as a weapon than as, than as an aid. Attempt to, to, to maintain freedom. more of a status quo rather than accept the change. Okay, so that's part mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. Part three is? Part three is the loving story which um, covers um, an interracial marriage in Virginia that led to the Supreme Court case Loving v. Virginia in 1967, which allowed um, interracial couples to marry. And so that was 67. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, you're at that tipping point where this, the civil rights movement is really um, big. And then the final one is? The final one is Freedom Riders, which covers the same historical period, but is about the, uh, the movement, um, I, I believe it was mostly in the South, but really throughout the country, mm -hmm. to, um, to um, sort of exercise those guaranteed equal rights to seating in, um, on transportation. And registering to vote and all that. So mm -hmm. you really, those last two then look at the same civil rights period, but one is a little bit more how they achieved it through the legal means and using the courts, and then the final one is the really activism of the groups and the individuals who participated in the sit-ins and the rides and the, um, the standing up for, for rights. Yeah, and those people were um, especially courageous. They were met with a lot of resistance. Um, at, at least one bus was terribly vandalized. I think it was burned. Um, so they met with a lot of resistance, but, um, but they kept at it. 
That sounds great. Okay, well, is there anything else you want to add before we close, Rita? Well, the only thing I would, I would encourage folks to do in addition to looking at this program is to check our event calendar. We have a lot of great ongoing programs for children and adults going on, and uh, we would love to, to have folks come out and check us out. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thanks for coming today. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I hope this uh, historical program is something that would appeal to you and you could attend and, and be part of the discussion and discussing the past and, and what we can learn from it. Thank you very much.